Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the day. We have a definite integral from 0 to pi over 4 of the square root of 1 minus cosine 4 theta d theta. Here's my hint. You don't need to use any integration techniques, really, besides sort of a u sub, but not, not even. All you need to do is rewrite the integram using some trig identities. So if you want to try it on your own, pause the video. So I'm going to remind you what our cosine double angle identities are. And just to avoid confusion, I'm going to write it using the argument 2a instead of 2 theta. So recall our good old double angle identities, cosine of 2a, which you could prove using the angle addition formula for cosine, is equal to cosine squared a minus sine squared a. And then there's actually two more versions, right? Because if I replace cosine squared a with 1 minus sine squared a, and then I have minus sine squared a, this turns into 1 minus 2 sine squared a. And then lastly, the third version would come from just replacing sine squared a with 1 minus cosine squared a, and the result is 2 cosine squared a minus 1. So here's all three versions, 1, 2, 3. And depending on what you're doing, one is more useful than the other. It just depends on the scenario. So I'm looking here. I know I have cosine 4 theta, but remember that's just 2 times 2 theta. So basically in this case, I'm going to treat 2 theta as my a. In order for me to proceed with integrating, it would be so lovely if this 1 was not here underneath the radical. So I want 1 minus hopefully something that would cancel with this 1. So I'm going to go with this second option here, 1 minus 2 sine squared a. But since we have cosine of 4 theta, which is cosine of 2 times 2 theta, right? The equivalent identity would be 1 minus 2 sine squared 2 theta. Take a second and marinate. Are we okay? Yeah, so basically 4 theta gets cut in half to 2 theta since we're using this double angle identity. So now let's go back, rewrite our integral. Keep those limits there. So we have 0 to pi over 4 square root. 1 minus, and then now I'm going to replace cosine 4 theta with 1 minus 2 sine squared 2 theta d theta. How are we doing? Good? Okay, beautiful. So now the 1's cancel out, right? If I distribute that negative. And then I'm going to have radical 2 sine squared 2 theta d theta. Excellent. I can break up that radical, so it's 0 to pi over 4, square root of 2, and then square root of sine squared 2 theta is absolute value sine 2 theta d theta. Oh yes. Now, notice they were so kind. Our limits of integration are from 0 to pi over 4. So we're in quadrant 1. Sine of 2 theta is positive there because we're going to be taking on values from 0 all the way to pi over 2, we're good. Sine's positive. So I would write something like sine of 2 theta is greater than or equal to 0 on 0 to pi over 4, and then I'm going to drop the absolute value bars. Make mention of it, because you want to distinguish yourself from the careless student who wouldn't even put the absolute value bars on, you know? It's like, you're not writing them moving forward because you know you don't need to, not because you were careless. Um, let's take the rad 2 out of the integral. 0 to pi over 4, sine 2 theta d theta. And then from here, I mean, if you need to do a u sub, you can because of the 2 in front of the theta, but most of you guys who are watching these videos are pretty advanced with your integration. So I'm just going to divide by 2 or multiply by 1 half. The antiderivative is going to be negative, right? Cosine 2 theta. We'll evaluate that from 0 to pi over 4. I'm just going to take the negative outside as well. So I have negative rad 2 over 2 times cosine of 2 times pi over 4 
minus cosine of 2 times 0, which is 0. Cosine of 2 times pi over 4, that's cosine of pi over 2. So this is just 0 minus cosine of 0 is 1. And then I have that negative rad 2 over 2 sitting out here. So negative rad 2 over 2 times negative 1 gives me positive rad 2 over 2. All right. So I hope you all enjoyed this integral. I have got to get crack -a in. I have class today, office hours. We have final exams coming up. So if you're in that same boat, if you have final exams coming up for your calc class, then check out the rest of my YouTube channel. I have everything organized into playlists for Calc 1, 2, 3, full video lectures, as well as final exam review videos. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. You can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Math with Professor V. I love you all, and I'll be back sooner than later. Bye!